Hi, welcome back. So I'm going to have a go at making my first part on this CNC mill that I've put together. Now, as I explained last time, when I got this thing, it didn't have a table. I managed to get the table from a supplier, but there's an end plate which goes on here to support the bearing, which I didn't have either. I've got the end plate off the manual version, which is still in my storage shed. So I just took it out to sort of get an idea of what it should look like. So that's essentially what we want to achieve. As you can see, there's a bearing on the end of the, um, the ball screw, a little bit sticking out. But to just get a feel of how precise the machine is, I'm going to do a test part just to see if I can get the bearing fit correct. So I've just drawn up this very simple test part. Um, the outer dimensions are just a piece of stock that I've got. I've then got a 30 millimeter square section just to test the precision in the x and y directions. Uh, then got a 22 mil recess for the bearing and a 15 for the little bit of shaft that sticks out beyond. And if we turn to the model, I've then extruded that to sensible depths. This will test a few different machining operations. So we've got a face first to face the part, then got a pocket, which does the main bearing pocket a secondary pocket operation which does the the recess for the the shaft and then finally the machine in the perimeter um, this other one is just a another method of doing the perimeter that i was playing with um, but we'll go with this one So just set up for a very basic facing operation here. Fingers on the E stop. That's the part faced. I shouldn't have taken it out of the truck because I've now lost my reference. That was a good idea, wasn't it? Um, does show that um, reminded me that I haven't actually um, trammed the mill yet. Um, this is reasonably flat, but you can feel the transitions. Um, so maybe I'll do that first. That very nearly fits. I'll tweak the program to make that hole ever so slightly larger um, and we'll do the extra bit of bore as well. 
So the 22 wasn't quite big enough for the bearing, so I've just increased it by a tiny amount. I've got 60 microns extra on there. I'll regenerate that and we'll try again. That's a bit slow. Let's modify that. Just grot, so actually, yeah, that looks pretty, pretty all right. Question is, does it fit on the bearing? Now well, that's a very nice fit. Pleased with that for a first attempt. So that's proven out the process of making the bearing hole. Um, got a bit more confidence that that's going to fit now. I did find uh, that the Y dimension uh, on here was 0.3 millimeters oversize. Turned out that I hadn't actually tightened the Y axis gib up properly. Uh, that's why it was not quite as accurate as it should be. Amazing it had made the um, circular feature so accurately. I've measured this all around and it doesn't vary by much as far as I can measure whereas the the, the wide dimension is a whole you know, 0 0.3 of a millimetre, 12 thou out from the dimension that I wanted. So just a couple of things of, that I wanted to say um, from using this mill. The spindle is really noisy. Um, that that rattle is, I think it's the, the splines um, which allow the quill mechanism to work. Obviously we're not using the quill because it's a CNC. Um, so it would be nice to find a way of stopping that from clattering. I mean, the other thing is that the spindle could go faster still. Um, I've already cranked it up. I think the top speed of this originally was 1750 RPM. It's now 2700 RPM. Um, there's the speed I can get it up to with the, the belt and pulley change that I've done. There's scope to up that even further. So it'd be nice if I could get maybe 4000 out of it. Um, could probably then go almost twice as fast cutting as I'm going at the moment. All the video you saw was about 10 times speed, so real life it is quite slow. The main thing for me is um, getting a feel for feeds and speeds and so on. Something that I'm just not used to thinking about from, from doing manual machining. On a manual mill you listen, you feel what's going on and you adjust and you, you find a you know, a rate at which everything works nicely. Um, doesn't necessarily mean you know what that feed is. It was a little bit of guesswork to get to the numbers I've got at the moment. Um, although I think I'm being pretty conservative, I think I can probably go a bit more aggressive, especially on the aluminium. So lots to play with. So now I need to make the plate itself. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a piece of material that size, but what I do have is a 3D printer. So I've made up a um, pattern I'm going to cast a lump uh, and I've cast in a, a section that I can grip in the vise with a little step on it so that it will sit above the vise and then I can machine around it, do the contour, um, do the bearing hole, drill the holes um, and then I'll just have to, I'll probably band saw off the, the lump um, and then face it and do the counter bores for the cap screws from this side. So the next job is to cast this, that'll be the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching.